As noted earlier, it really wasn't until the late 1870s that waves of farmers took advantage of the Homestead Act and began arriving on the Great Plains. Uh, before this massive wave of farmers arrived, there was uh, another draw to the Great Plains, and that was the cattle industry. In this section of the topic, we'll look at the development of the cattle industry. Uh, while some uh, colonial Americans had, had raised smaller so-called scrub cattle, by the early 19th century, the Texas Longhorn, a product of natural selection in contact with Ango cattle, were numerous in South Texas and Mexico. As many as five million roamed the grasslands of Texas, many neglected. While a taste for beef was growing in the industrialized eastern cities, and eastern tanneries had developed uh, improved methods of curing cattle hides, the cattle were not considered valuable because they were uh, you know, too far removed from the population centers and, and the markets. It was too far and expensive to move them in herds, and it, and it was impossible to slaughter the animals and transport the beef because without electrification and refrigeration, you know, the beef would go bad before it reached the consumers. The expansion of the Transcontinental Railroad, however, changed all this. When the Kansas and Pacific Railroad Company developed the idea for the so-called cattle car, the uh, type of railroad car to hold cattle, the entrepreneur Joseph McCoy promoted the idea of driving the cattle northward through Indian Territory to the small village of Abilene, Kansas, on the uh, railway line. He uh, promoted the Chisholm Trail, an old Indian trail northward, first laid out by the part Cherokee Indian trader Jesse Chisholm. McCoy advertised extensively throughout Texas to encourage cattle owners to follow the Chisholm Trail to market in Abilene. He told them he could have the cattle shipped to other markets on the railroad and that he would pay the owners a handsome profit. Many cattlemen took McCoy up on the offer, and by 1870, thousands of Texas Longhorns were being driven along the Chisholm Trail on what became famous as the, quote, cattle drives. Due to their long legs and hard hoofs, Longhorns were uh, ideal trail cattle, even gaining weight on the long cattle drives northward. A herd of cattle would cost uh, only a couple of bucks in uh, southern Texas, but it could be sold for you know thirty to fifty dollars in some of the major eastern cities. Not only did McCoy make a profit by shipping the cattle east, he also invested heavily in Abilene. McCoy later published a book about his cattle business. The cattlemen would hire cowboys to drive the animals. The image people have of cowboys today is par is largely accurate. They have big hats to block the sun, bandanas to block the dust chaps to protect the legs, guns to protect the cattle from natural predators, or cattle rustling. The cowboys used lassoing to retrieve stray cattle. Uh, life for the cowboys was, was not easy, you know, it was hot and dusty and lonely, and the work continued from sunup to sundown. There uh, was no protection from rain or hail. It was often drudgery and uh, boredom, and the wages were low, approximately $30 per month the same as a common laborer, and it was all paid at the end of the drive. The boss would provide the horses, the bedroll, the saddle and spurs, along with a chuck wagon of supplies. Cowboys would eat a diet primarily of soybeans, beans, and coffee, a diet bereft of fruit and veggies that could lead uh, to the disease of scurvy. Not surprisingly, many cowboys were minorities. The original cowboys, of course, were Hispanic, the Mexican vaqueros. A number were African American, but all were poor and largely transient. Their average age was approximately 24 years old. The cattle drives were so popular and profitable, soon four main routes emerged. Uh, just to the west of the Chisholm Trail, there was the Western Trail, which was also known as the Dodge City Trail. Further west was the Goodnight Loving Trail, which followed the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains. Named for the cattleman Charles Goodnight and Oliver Loving, the trail went through the prosperous town of Denver, growing on the eastern slope of the Rockies due to the mining industry. Finally, there was a Shawnee Trail to the east of the Chisholm Trail. Uh, that was the easternmost cattle drive route, which went through what today is near the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, Metroplex. This trail ended in Sedalia, Missouri. 
The cattle towns like Abilene and Sedalia, where cattle drives terminated, prospered. In Abilene, McCoy was wise enough to purchase 250 acres where he built a hotel known as Drover's Cottage and stockyards equipped for 2,000 head of cattle. Bars and dance halls provided entertainment after the long cattle drives. In Sedalia, a boom in the 1870s led to the construction of dozens of brick buildings, a new city hall and post office, numerous Victorian style houses, and even a new public water and gas system. Many cattle boom towns even offered plays or opera houses. Uh, this concludes the, uh, this section on the uh, development of the, uh, the cattle drive business.